It's a lot to take in. So let's bring in a guy who knows a thing or two about football. Our coach, Dave Wanstead, now joining us here. Dave, this has been kind of a crazy, crazy day that we've seen. So I want to know, what was your initial reaction to the move of USC and UCLA to the Big Ten? Well, I, I believe I was like every other football fan. I mean, I was kind of taken back a little bit. It was it was really, uh, I'm still trying to digest everything, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the, the main reason is how could, you know, it still gets me, how could all this happen so fast? I think that, you know, talking to a lot of people today, that's the thing that's got everybody back on their heels. Okay, we could see if there was some talk and there was a little bit of, you know, disillusion with the Pac-12 and the revenue being brought in and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, for it to happen almost overnight in as far as a fan's perspective, uh, it's a lot. But I'll tell you what, the Big Ten, Kevin, Kevin Ward, I give him some credit. I mean, to, to get... You know, USC, you know, and, and we were talking earlier, Lawrence, you know, I, I coached at USC, went to a Rose Bowl at USC. So I know the USC family. I know the Trojan family. I know that that rivalry and I know a lot about UCLA and they are not just for our listeners. You got to understand. Yes. Are you getting a, t a team with as many national championships as Ohio State and more Heismans, I think, than anybody and on and on and on? Yes. But if you look at the athletic programs, and this is important, I think, you know, UCLA, I think, has 119 team championships, uh, maybe only second to Stanford in the entire country when you start talking about men's and women's tennis and swimming and on and on and on. I mean, they, th these are two great, in my opinion, athletic programs. And that is a real feather in the cap, I think, for the Big Ten and strengthening them. Can the Pac-12 recover from this? Well, I don't know. I mean, this is just, you know, everybody's going to wait and see what happens with the Big 12. You know, the Big 12 obviously added Memphis and who else? I think Cincinnati and two or three teams to take the place of Oklahoma and, you know, leaving and Texas leaving. What the Pac-12 does, I don't know. And, and there's been a complaint. When I was at USC and I was doing Fox out there and I was doing college football, you know, Fox always was covering the, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. So I, I'd, be, I'd go to those seminars and everybody complained about what time the games are on. You know, Pac they got the, the Pac-12 after dark. And the whole thinking behind that was if you're on the East Coast and they play a night game, they're not kicking off till 11 o'clock on the East Coast. That's a tough sell uh, when people have been watching football all day long on Saturday and now a team's kick. So, I mean, you know, the scheduling thing was always a complaint to try to get that exposure for their programs, exposure for their players. You know, it, 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 there, there's been stuff behind the scenes brewing for years. But, wow, you know, this is a, this is a major, major decision and major news. Once a coach, always a coach. I, I got to know, when you see the, the travel possibilities for these coaches once they get into the conference, how worried would you be right now if you were sitting in one of those offices trying to make this work logistically? Well, it, it, it will be a different challenge. There's no question, uh, you know, particularly if you're playing, uh, you know, if USC's playing Penn State or playing Rutgers or Maryland. You know, you're going across the country and uh, the time difference will be a factor. It'll be curious to see, Lawrence, if they get into what the NFL teams do, where they go actually a day earlier to give the team a chance to, uh, and the players to adjust to the time change. I never believed in that. I mean, when I coached at the Miami Dolphins, and when we went out and played the Raiders or the Seahawks, we went out Saturday morning, normal time, had our meetings, got up Sunday and played the game. So... But you'll see different variations. It's definitely something to answer your question that they'll be having some discussions about in all these meetings. Dave, what do you think happens with Notre Dame? Because I imagine if you're the ACC, you're on the phone with Notre Dame. If you're the Big Ten, you're probably on the phone with Notre Dame. What do you think happens with them? Well, this does. I don't see this affecting Notre Dame right now. I mean, you know, Notre Dame has their own TV and they're, they're kind of, their own school they've always been they've had opportunities from what i know to join all these conferences in the past i'm sure any conference would take them 
and they've they've turned it down. So why would they have a change of heart now? I mean, let, let's face it. The big reason at the end of the day for UCLA and USC making the move is for financial purposes. You know, I've been told that they need to, with all this NIL, uh, you know, stuff going on with these college kids, they needed to increase their revenue level uh, from an athletic uh, department. Both these schools did, and they weren't getting it out of the Pac-12, and they feel like they'll definitely get it from go- making the move to the Big Ten. So, um, you know, that that's the biggest reason. At the end of the day, it, it comes down to money. Do you think that we're now seeing eventually we'll end up with just two conferences? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, there's awful good teams. You know, it, it could go that way. I mean, the ACC is, you know, awful strong right now. I could see possibly some schools in the Big 12 uh, and some schools in the, in the Pac-12 maybe join it up and, and maybe you would have four strong conferences. I mean, the ACC is pretty darn good football right now, in my opinion. You know, I think Florida State will be back, and you got Miami coming back. Pitt now has made a big move. Still, you got Clemson and North Carolina. You know, so uh, I don't see. I think it it could get too watered down. If you have two conferences, what are you going to have, 25 teams, 20 teams in a conference? That's a lot. That's a lot. What's this like for you? Like, is, is it? did you think that the future of college football would look like this? Uh, no, no. And the biggest thing that I miss, and I don't think there's a substitute for it, is the rivalries in college football. And that's what's getting uh, or could get watered down or eliminated. You know, I mean, Pitt's playing West Virginia this year to start the college football season, the end of right, uh, Labor Day weekend, Thursday. I, I think that's going to be the first college game on a Thursday night. But Pitt hasn't played West Virginia in I don't know how many years. And, you know, they're, they're, they're 45 minutes away driving. Pitt doesn't play Penn State. They haven't played them. I mean, those games, in my opinion, there's some real, uh, there's some real importance to the alumni and to the fans to have those college rivalries. And the bigger the conferences get, all of a sudden those old rivalries, they disappear. Why? Because there's not enough games. You know, you got 12 games and, and, and you're going to play X amount. I'm, you know, I'll see how many conference games that they play now. And, and they might have room for one or two extra games. Nobody wants to go play another, you know, the, you know that one division AA school again. I mean, a big robbery and have a chance of losing that. Everybody's going to be jockeying to try and get a couple wins with some lesser opponents when they're not playing conference games. And I think that in itself will eliminate the old school rivalries, which I think is real important, you know, for college football. It's definitely something to keep in mind. I'm glad that we had our coach, Dave wants that here to break it all down, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, and let me just make one quick story. We got a second. Sure. For you when, all when the I time. The, when I took the job at USC, I remember we had a big orientation. We were all down in the chancellor's office, and the chancellor was going over the history of the school, how it started. And then he finished, and uh, he left, very gracious guy. And uh, we were all getting up, ready to leave. And the uh, vice chancellor said, hold on one second. And he said, gentlemen, let me make one statement to you. There is a direct correlation between the number of football games that we win and our alumni contributions. Good luck. We need to win games. So, I mean, (laughs) it's, uh, (laughs) you know, and and that's, it's money. You know, I said that earlier. This is all about uh, what can we do to to raise revenue and bring in more money to our university and our athletic department's uh, facilities on and on. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. I mean, can you, can you imagine the, I mean, how about Penn State? playing USC, you know, in a, in a night game. I mean, now you're going to have viewership from the West Coast to the East Coast. So, I mean, the TV market and the marketing, the sponsors, they're going to get a – Big Ten's going to get a nice little nice little shot in the arm from this. And the Big Ten is now coast to coast, East Coast to West. Dave, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Okay, good talking, Lawrence. Bye-bye.